To create a finalized sketch, you're going to need graph paper and you're going to need all your original measurements from your crime scene. It's best when you get to a crime scene to do a rough sketch of the scene with just a quick drawing of where everything's located. And then on the side, you want to take the following measurements. You want to take a focal point measurement, knowing where the focal point of your room is. So in this case, the focal point of our room was the northeast corner. So we would measure everything from the north wall and everything from the east wall. And then you want to measure the length, the width, and the height of every object. Once you have that information for every object in your crime scene, then you're able to start your finalized sketch. The first thing that you always want to do when you start your finalized sketch is you want to label um, northeast, southwest. So I'm going to make north the top of my paper if you want to follow along. Okay. You always want to label those first to give you some directionality. The next thing that you want to do is you always want to label what your focal point was. In this case, ours was the northeast corner. So I'm going to just put a circle here. And I'm going to label this FP. Once you've got your focal point um, on your paper, then you can start making the size of your room. Um, the size of the room was 200 centimeters by 300 centimeters, and we said that the scale we were going to use is one box equals 10 centimeters. That means that I'm going to divide every measurement I have by 10 so that I know how far to go within here. So I'm going to scale it down by 10, basically. So I'm going to take 200 and divide it by 10, which is 20 boxes. So then I'm going to count over 20 boxes. So one, two, So you should count over 20 boxes. Um, oops, sorry, I'm going to go 30 on the top because it was 20, 200 by 300. 21, I always tend to do the length east to west and the um, width north to south. So I did. I did 30 boxes because I did 300 divided by 10 across the top, and then I'm going to count 20 boxes down. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my lines in. You're going to want to always use rulers. Obviously, on the smart board, I can't use a ruler, so I'm going to do the best that I can. Trying to get them straight, but you would want your lines to be very straight. Whoops. So you would want to fix that. You would want to make sure that that was straight up and down, but with the pens, that's the best I can do. So once you have the room size, okay, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go about um, adding in your objects. We're going to start with the table first. So we're going to find the center of our table which is using our focal point measurement. So we're going to take 50 and we're going to divide it by 10. And then we're going to take 50 and divide by 10. So we know we're going to go 50 um, divided by 10, which is five boxes to the south. And we're going to go 50 divided by 10, which is five boxes to the west. The reason we're going to the south and to the west is because our focal point's in the northeast corner. So everything is going to be going towards the south and everything is going to be going towards the west. Okay, so I'm going to count down five boxes south. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to count five boxes to the west. One, two, three, four, five. That should be the center of my table right there. Now I need to do the length of my table and the width of my table. The height doesn't matter because we're doing a two-dimensional drawing, so you always want to have it in there um, in your key, but it doesn't necessarily matter for the final sketch drawing. So. The length of my table was 60, so I'm going to do 60 divided by 10, which is 6 boxes. So my table should be a total of 6 boxes across. Um, since the focal point was to the middle of my object, I'm going to divide 6 by 2, so I know how many boxes to go from the middle each way. So that's 3, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. So the idea is if you count it all the way across, this should be a total of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So the reason we divide that by two afterwards is just so that we know how many boxes to go from the middle each direction. So don't get confused by that. Then the width is 40 centimeters down here. So I'm going to take 40 and I'm going to divide it by 10, which is four boxes. And I'm going to go, I'm going to take four boxes and divide by two to go one um, up and down. So one, two, one, two. And then once I've got all my points, I'm going to square it in. And now my table is in the correct location and it's the correct size. And obviously you would want yours to be way straighter, your lines to be way straighter than mine. Sorry. Let's see if I can fix it a little bit. So you would want to make sure you used a ruler and got your line straight. But now your table is the correct size and in the correct location. You want to label it. So I would just start with, with A and then your table and your key would be labeled A and it would say table and then it would have all your measurements in it. So the next one that we're going to do is the blood pool right here. Okay, so our focal point measurements 60 centimeters to the south, 180 centimeters to the west. So I'm going to take 60 and I'm going to divide it by 10. That's six boxes to the south, so I'm going to go six to the south. Five, six right here and then I'm going to go 180 centimeters to the west so I'm going to divide that by 10 so 180 divided by 10 is 18 boxes Two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. 12 13 14 so that should be the center of my blood pool. Now the lengths and widths of my blood pool are 60 and 60. So I'm going to divide each one by 10. So the length of my blood pool is, should be six boxes. So I'm going to count and I'm going to divide that by two. So I know I'm going to go three each direction. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three. And then it's the same thing for the width. Um, it's 60 divided by 10, which is six. So I'm going to go, I'm going to divide it by two. I'm going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then usually if it's a blood pool, I'll kind of make it more circular in shape just because I know it's probably not square like my table would have been. But it's still going to be the same size and in the same location. Okay. Um, so now I know that it's the correct size and correct location. I'm going to put a B here. And I'm going to label my blood pool down here and my key with a B as well. Okay. The last thing that we have to add is the body. The body is kind of unique. When you put the body onto a final sketch and when you're measuring a body, you always want to do a length width and height like normal. But instead of just doing one focal point to the middle of the body, it works best if you do a focal point measurement to the head, to the middle of the body, and to the feet. It just because bodies are usually not in perfect kind of um, up and down or side to side locations, it gives you a better idea of where the body is and to draw it to the correct size than just doing it in the middle. Um, so I have three focal point measurements here for my body. Okay, so I'm going to put those on first so I know kind of the location, and then I'll use my lengths and widths to um, sketch in the rest of the body. You get the most leniency with the body in terms of sketching it out. So your focal point measurement for the head is 150 centimeters south and 200 centimeters to the west. So I'm going to divide both of those by 10. So it's going to be 15 boxes to the south and 20 boxes to the west. So I'm going to go 15 down. Two, three. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I'm going to go 20 in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so the focal point for my head should be about right there. 
And then the focal point for my middle was 150 centimeters to the south and 150 centimeters to the west. So if I divide both of those by 10, it's 15 boxes to the south and 15 to the west. So I already know that this is 15 down because I just counted it. So now I'm going to go 15 to the west. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 15. Okay, and then my feet are 150 centimeters south and 100 centimeters to the west. So 15 boxes to the south and 10 to the west. Again, I'm already at my 15 here. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so right there. So that's going to be approximately my head, approximately my middle, approximately my feet. Now the length of my body is 120 centimeters total, so I'm going to divide that by 10, which is 12 boxes. Okay, um, and I'm going to kind of start in my middle, and I'm going to take that and divide it by 2, so that's 6 boxes in each direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so that should be my length. Um, and then my width was 60. So I'm going to divide that by 10, which is six boxes. And I'm going to go, so th like three in each direction. And then what I do is now that I've kind of got my area, I would use the pictures, the photographs from my crime scene, and I would sketch the body in the same position that the body was in. So obviously this is my head, right? And then say the person's arms were out like this and then their feet were like this okay however the body was is how I would sketch it in and I would use the outline of my measurements to do that okay um, like I said we usually give the most leniency with the bodies because if they're diagonal or something like that it's a little bit hard you want to do you want to get it in the right size the best position as possible and you want to try to get it sketched out in a similar shape to what it looked like when you were at your crime scene. And then you always want to label it. So I'm going to put this one as a C because that's my next letter. And on my key I would put a C. So when you're done sketching, you should have your sketch labeled with northeast, southwest. You should always have your focal point labeled. And then every object in your crime scene should be the correct height and and in the correct location to scale. So whatever your scale is, I always recommend trying to use one box equals 10 centimeters if ever at all possible. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes your crime scene is too big to fit on your paper and you have to do one box equals 20 centimeters, etc. But if you can help it, one box equals 20 centimeters, or 10 is the best because it's the easiest to divide by 10. You can usually even do that without a calculator. Okay, so once you get everything, and obviously yours is going to be a little way neater than mine just because I have to use the pens with my um, mouse, but yours should be a lot neater, but that's the idea of how to create a final sketch.